Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Why is Bird Flu Making Cows Sick? Read by Miranda Wilson Abstract Did you know bird flu can affect animals other than birds? Bird flu usually affects wild birds like geese and farm birds like chickens, but sometimes it can jump to other animals. This includes cats, cows, and even humans. We wanted to understand this process better. When cows started getting sick from bird flu and stopped producing milk, we examined how this happened. We looked at the amount of virus and where it was present in the cows. We sampled their milk and several other tissues. We found that the virus mainly infected the mammary glands, which produce milk. We studied the genetic changes in the virus's genetic code. This helped us better understand how it spreads. We discovered that the bird flu virus moved between cows and from cows to other animals in the farms easily. We also learned that the virus moved between farms. It is important to track outbreaks and reduce activities that could spread the bird flu virus. This can help us prevent more animals and humans from getting sick. Introduction. Have you ever had the flu? If so, you might remember coughing, being tired, and feeling achy. Other animals get the flu too. It's caused by a virus. There are lots of different forms of the flu virus that infect different animals. In certain cases, the flu virus that infects one type of animal can also jump across species and infect other animals. This jump from one type of animal to another is called spillover. This can happen due to the virus's ability to change its genetic code, its RNA. The changes in the viral RNA are called mutations. RNA can mutate when viruses replicate. Flu viruses can also get mutations by swapping pieces of RNA with other flu viruses, usually when they meet in the same infected animal. It is important to keep track of how viruses like the flu spill over from one animal species into another. One way to track the spread of viruses is to compare how closely their RNA matches. We can create a family tree of the virus RNA. In this tree, viruses that are closely related appear near each other, just like siblings in a family. The sibling viruses likely come from the same source. Distantly related viruses come from different sources. In early 2024, American farmers noticed strange flu-like symptoms in their dairy cows. Plus, their milk was sometimes thick and yellow. Several of the sick cows even stopped producing milk. This was worrying. A new version of the bird flu virus had already spilled over into wild mammals like cats, foxes, and seals. We wanted to investigate the possibility that bird flu spilled over into dairy cows. We also wanted to understand how it spread. This important information can help protect farm animals from getting sick in the future. Methods. We studied animals from nine farms that reported sick dairy cows in early 2024. We collected over 300 samples from dairy cows. These included nose swabs, blood, urine, feces, and milk. We also took samples from wild animals found dead on the farms. Here in figure one, you can see milk samples from infected cows. The coloration varied from yellowish to a pink brown color. Curdling is also visible in some samples. The top part of the image shows what milk looks like from above. On the bottom, you can see a side view of eight samples. The ones on the left are more pinkish brown, and you can see curdling in them. The ones on the right are more yellow in color. In the lab, we confirmed that the animals had bird flu. Then we examined three questions. One, how much virus was in each sample? We did this by extracting viral RNA. Then we used specific methods to detect the quantity of RNA in the samples. We also used a microscope and virus-specific staining techniques to see where the virus was in different tissues. We looked at the lungs, intestines, and mammary glands. Two, how long had the animals been making or producing viral particles that could infect other animals? We collected extra samples for testing three, 16, and 31 days later. And three, 
What was the RNA sequence, the genetic fingerprint, of the viruses in the sick animals? We use this information to help us understand how the virus spread. Results. We found that milk from sick dairy cows had the highest level of bird flu virus. Their mammary gland tissue, which produces milk, had similarly high levels. We detected the bird flu virus RNA for up to 31 days. Luckily, the virus was no longer infectious after the third day. When we looked at the virus's RNA in samples from sick cows, the sequence was different from other versions of bird flu that we know about. The virus's RNA had accumulated mutations. We also tracked apparently healthy dairy cows from one farm to another. They infected dairy cows at the second farm, so they were actually carrying the virus. Here in figure two, you can see the average level of the bird flu virus we measured in the 300 samples of bodily fluids we collected from dairy cows. On the x-axis of the graph, you can see the type of sample. From left to right, they are nasal swab in green, whole blood in red, urine in yellow, feces in orange, and milk in blue. On the y-axis, you can see the virus level. Looking at the graph, in which samples did we find the highest level of bird flu virus? Finally, we discovered that some of the wild mammals, raccoons, and cats on the farms were infected. They had the same version of the bird flu virus as the dairy cows, and were probably infected after swallowing raw milk from the sick cows. Discussion. Our results show that dairy cows can get bird flu. The virus infects and replicates in the mammary glands. This causes high quantities of virus in the milk. Some of the farm animals may have been infected by drinking raw milk. Luckily, pasteurizing milk can kill the bird flu virus. Many of the sick cows live on farms along a major bird migration route, so wild birds may have infected them. Even more concerning is that an infected cow could pass the virus on to other cows and animals on the farm. This is the first time we have seen transmission of the bird flu virus from one mammal to another and, most importantly, from one cow to another. If the bird flu virus gets mutations that help it infect mammals, it could start to infect humans as well. Conclusion You might think that cows, wild birds, and humans live in very different environments, but our lives are all connected. As humans build more farms, towns, and cities, we are moving into spaces where wild animals live. This makes it easier for diseases like bird flu to spread between animals and even to us. Fortunately, drinking only pasteurized milk can protect us from many infections. Farmers, vets, and researchers should continue to work together to fight off the spread of diseases. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature published on July 25, 2024. Research conducted by Kirill Dimitrov, Diego Diel, and others from Texas A&M Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory in Texas and the Department of Population Medicine and Diagnostic Sciences at Cornell University in New York. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources. Hey everyone, we're a small nonprofit and all of our resources are free. So if you like what you see, Please subscribe and share.